Now, Shrewsbury Abbey, which I've mentioned, contained the relics of St. Winifred, so it does have some legend to go attached to it. Uh, but I've not come across any real ghost stories related to it. The Duncow pub opposite is, is supposedly one of the most haunted pubs in the Hall of Shrewsbury. And one of the ghosts is meant to be a monk, which who almost certainly must have been associated with the Abbey. Well, the Abbey was a lot larger building than it currently is today, and would have stretched almost to the um, to the Duncow. So maybe that's related. You can say is related to the Abbey. It was made famous uh, through the uh, Brother Cadfell tales. Um, and indeed, there was, I, I'm not certain it's still there, but there was some sort of tourist attraction to Brother Cadfell as a result. Now, I walk through the, I walk through the graveyard uh, on my way to the mosque or masjid. And one day as I was walking through the graveyard, I was confronted by what I believed to be Elizabethan ghosts. And they took great interest in me being a Mohammedan and had no idea where this Indonesia was that I lived. So you could say, well, you know, I, I have a ghost story related to it. But I later found out that most of the graves were of the early Victorian period, not Elizabethan. Which leads me to think that, you know, these ghosts... I, one may be seeing something from another dimension and one tries to figure out what it is and sort of conjures up a story behind it. Um, I'm not trying to say it's just the imagination, far from it. No, I'm, I'm sure that you're aware and seeing something, uh, but I'm not too certain that the way we interpret it is real. Now, I, I, I do state elsewhere that the reason why the Abbey uh, is no longer anything like as big, you know, it's, it's just the Abbey Church, the parish church now, is to do with Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. And, and it, it was, you know, I mean, it was one of the biggest abbeys in the whole of England and, and most of it was pulled down by Henry VIII and his, his soldiers. Um, and it stretched a long way, particularly a long way north, into, you know, very much into the graveyard, which although I said was Victorian, mostly early Victorian graves, I mean, of course, for, for quite a distance, we will be probably on medieval graves, including, ah, would it include Elizabethan? No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. So it'd be earlier than Elizabethan graves, but, you know, not that much earlier, some Tudor, you see before Henry, yeah, yeah. So it, the, the ghosts I saw might have been Tudor ghosts, you know. Uh, so I might have got it wrong because, of course, there would be graves associated with the Abbey all around Abbey Foregate. And now, I'm blaming the Henry VIII for a lot, but, you know, uh, the biggest culprit for the destruction of the old Abbey was Thomas Telford, because he built the road that you see in front of it, and... Uh, before the two Shrewsbury bypasses, the, the old bypass and the new one, very imaginatively named, um, we had, uh, uh, this road was built, you know, the, the A5, uh, going from London to Holyhead. So it was the main way that joined two of the principal cities uh, of the British Isles, uh, London and Dublin. So... Um, yeah, a very important road, but was it important enough to destroy this wonderful abbey that, that I said contained the relics of St. Winifred, but it actually contained the tomb of St. Winifred. So, great place, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the reason why the abbey is, is only now a church, and as I say, it covered a larger area, was of course it was part of Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. So much of the abbey was actually torn down. And in fact, there's a manor house called Whitehall on Monkmore Road, not far from the abbey, that was built with stone that was pulled down from the abbey. Um, but it was whitewashed 
to hide, the, hence the name Whitehall, to hide the fact that it had been built with stone, the, the sandstone that came from the pulled down abbey. I think Shrewsbury is pretty unique in, in so much as it doesn't have an Anglican cathedral, so therefore is not a city. And indeed, the name Proud Salopium comes from the time that Shrewsbury was offered city status and rejected it, preferring to be a big fish in a small pool. I think that's a way of saying it. Uh, but it does have a Catholic cathedral. And in fact, the diocese of Shrewsbury stretches all the way to the southern suburbs of Manchester and the southern suburbs of Liverpool. Um, the cathedral itself is, is a really, really impressive building. Um, and it had originally been designed uh, by Pugin, the, the senior, uh, but he died and it was completed by his son. Um, opened in 1856 and now you know despite it being an impressive building it's yet another of these places that I cannot find any evidence of ghost stories related to it and it really does feel like the sort of place where you'd expect to have such a story. Now, since medieval times, there's been a church dedicated to St. Chad's in Shrewsbury. Um, since the time of the first Bishop of Mercia in the 7th century. Um, and the old St. Chad's church, by the end of the 18th century, was ageing, fallen into disrepair, and cracks appeared on the tower. Now, the engineer Thomas Telford advised that he was in danger of collapse. And he was right, because one morning in 1788, uh, the parishioners awoke to find uh, a pile of rubble, but no church. Now, I can find no real, no real um, legends of ghosts, although all around it, there are legends, you know, all around it are legends of ghosts. But I suppose that the, the, the most common one associated with it. It is said that there are ghosts of monks seen in the Golden Cross because there's meant to be a tunnel between Old St. Chad's and the Golden Cross. But I don't know what monks would be doing at the church. I'm not, I'm not certain about it at all. Uh, Prince's Street leading to the Old St. Chad's apparently used to be known as Candle Lane. And that's because it's, it's the site of where ladies with candles, carrying candles, used to make a vigil to the old St. Chad's. And it's believed that um, to this day you can, you can see the ladies with their candles walking along Prince's Street and occasionally even smell candles burning. When the roof of the original St. Chad's Church collapsed, uh, the parish um, decided to build a new one, which is in the current position overlooking the quarry. Um, and, you know, a, a wonderful, wonderful church it is. Um, it was largely destroyed, yeah, it, it, it collapsed in 1788. Uh, and all that really remains is the churchyard, the crypt and a side chapel. So a Scottish architect, George Stewart, was commissioned to build the new church. And he submitted a number of designs, including this wonderful round design, circular design. And that wasn't actually the preferred design of the parish, but there was a bit of a mix-up and time was limited, so they built that. And it's, it's the only circular Georgian church in England, so... You know, a wonderful thing. Foundation stone was laid in 1790, and it's built of the local Grinsel stone. Um, it's supported by slender cast iron pillars, a very early example of cast iron being used for this purpose. Uh, and it was opened in 1792. The sanctuary window is a copy of the stained glass triptych by Rubens in Adwerp Cathedral, made by a local artist, David Evans, 
Um, the pulpit itself was redesigned in the arts and crafts style. And, you know, it's, it's remained um, Shrewsbury's liberal Anglo-Catholic church. I, I suppose it's the major church in Shrewsbury, particularly with St. Um, Mary's now being closed. Um, the churchyard, it's, it's only small, but it's famous because of when Christmas Carol was filmed, there was a, 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 a gravestone where you couldn't read anything on it. So the, the, um, the film crew wrote Ebenezer Scrooge on this, um, on this headstone. And you can still see it, but it is an original gravestone, just clearly not that of Ebenezer Scrooge. Now, I can find no references to ghosts apart from Ebenezer Scrooge whatsoever. What I can tell you is that I was um, confirmed at St. Chad's Church and went on to become a server or altar boy at St. Chad's Church. And, and I, I, I still attend it. I still attend it. Um, despite, despite defining myself as a Muslim, I attend it when I'm, when I'm in Shrewsbury. Um, the other thing was I attended the Priory Boys Grammar School just down the road and we used to have a Founders Day when the Priory Boys and the Priory Girls would get together and we hardly ever got together because they were a long way apart in Shrewsbury. Um, so it was the one opportunity we used to have to oogle at the Priory Girls. Now, of course, there's the tale of Robin Aitchison, who died climbing the spire of St. Augmund's. But strangely enough, there's a similar tale about St. Mary's Church. Um, and in 1739, the showman, Robert Cadman, attempted to slide from it, headfirst using a rope and a grooved breastplate. His engraved obituary stands outside the west door. It's... it's the spire is one of the tallest in, in England and it's one of the oldest churches in Shrewsbury, although no longer in use. Um, it's best known for its 14th century Jesse window, which must have been, uh, must have been um, ransacked from somewhere in, um, in Europe. But it, it, does, it does fit in the church. Church itself no longer, is no longer in use as a church, but... You know, I mean, it's still a wonderful building. And now, I've just listened to a uh, podcast uh, by Maggie Love, who is the one and the same Margaret Love that I used to know as a child, on old St. Chad's Church. And she claims that the Jesse window found in St. Mary's Church might have originally come from old St. Chad's Church. Of course, it doesn't prevent it from having been ransacked or, or maybe even bought from somewhere in your uh, church in Europe originally. But yeah, that's, that's Maggie's view of it for what it is worth. Right next to uh, St. Altman's Church is St. Julian's Church. And uh, there's a story of a man who was by himself out on the town. He was, he was apparently staying at the Lion Hotel. And he was found stone cold the following morning in his bed by a maid. The speculation he was poisoned by a local innkeeper for failing to pay his dues. Uh, locals used what money they found in his pocket to pay for a burial. And the next day they lowered him into the ground at St. Julian's Church, which is next to St. Altman's. That night, a passerby heard the sound of scraping near where the man had been buried. buried. When the grave diggers exhumed the body, scratch marks were present inside the coffin. On the most silent of nights, you can still hear terrible groaning noises from St. Julian's graveyard.
there is a story about St Altman's Church that, that I, I, I didn't know as a child, but a story that has gone around about St Altman's Church. And it's said that if you look at the spire, spire, you can see the devil's claws on it. Well, you know, here's the spy. I can't see it. But anyway, meant to be. Of course, the devil's chair on the Stiper Stones is only about 24 kilometres away. Um, so, you know, the devil is meant to be be there. But, um, yeah, I've, I've not come across this story about St Altman's before. But a lovely church. And now, I did say that I had doubts about that story about St Altman's. And I find as a alternative story although you can see maybe how the two get mixed up and that is a steeplejack said to be haunted by a steeplejack who helped to construct the spire yes the very spire that the devil's prints are meant to be on in the 15th century and it's believed that he accepted a bet to climb the church tower and fell to his death as a result uh, numerous people claim to have seen his ghostly form uh, climbing the spire at night and despite despite often having seen St Altman's late at night after a few pints I can't claim I've ever seen it now I actually grew up in a village called Condover or at least mo me most of my years were in a village called Condover and that features in my vlog about Condover Hall the bloody hand and to, and to a lesser degree, my vlog on Wild Edric. Um, but Geoffrey of Condover apparently stole some of the land belonging to St. Altman's. And as a penance, he and his retainers were stripped naked, whipped up the hill, which I don't know if they mean Butcher Row or not, but whipped up the hill to St. Altman's, whipped naked along the Isle of St. Altman's up to the high altar until it was deemed that they had done their penance, I, I should add, by the clergy of St Altman's. Well, now, this is Shrewsbury Cemetery running along what was the bypass. Um, I think it's called the Old Bypass now, which is very imaginative, considering we have a new bypass. Um, I'm not aware of any ghost stories related to the cemetery. I mean, you'd expect there to be, but I'm not aware of any. I used to go out with a girl who rented a room in a house that was next to the entrance to the cemetery, and I don't recall anything on toward. Many times I've walked through it, maybe after quite a few pints, but late at night as a shortcut and, and nothing has ever happened. Um, however, when when I was most sort of acutely aware of paranormal activities, I was approached one day by a young boy and girl, children, you know, young children, in Victorian costumes who asked me to help them. Um, but as I say, that was at a time when I was particularly prone to seeing such things. And as you can see, not many of the graves of Victorian, may, maybe... Maybe further back they are, but um, yeah, I, I'm not sure at all. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have, can you help me out a little? Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and then you'll be notified of future vlogs. But also hit the like button and make a comment uh, because these seem to be what determine the um, YouTube algorithm and I, I'm being really punished by it so whatever help I can get from you is, is so appreciated it really is I'm uh, when I started this I was going to do it uh, this this section the real magic of Java I was going to issue maybe t every two three months now it's it's happening maybe every two or three days so yeah if you hit the bell you'll hear about it um and thank you so much thank you for listening really heartfelt thanks